Now to the major developing story, the release of that partial report from the special purpose grand jury investigating possible election interference in the 2020 presidential election in Georgia. So here's the latest right now at five o'clock. That partial report came out at 11 o'clock this morning, and we want to stress the word partial. Here's why, because the judge ordered just four pages of the full nine page report, and there were limited details about what exactly the grand jury determined. But it does contain two major headlines. First, the report determined there was no widespread election fraud in Georgia during the 2020 presidential election. And also, it recommends perjury charges against at least one witness. But it does not say who. We have live Team 2 coverage of all of this right now at 5. From the latest on the report to reaction from local leaders and even some of the people who testified to the special purpose grand jury. Channel 2 investigative reporter Justin Gray begins our live Team 2 coverage live in downtown Atlanta. And Justin, you've been going through every piece of the information on this report since it arrived here. What did you learn? Well, Karen, we knew we were not going to get all of this report. Those most critical sections about possible criminal indictments, of course, that remains under seal. But there were some sections of this report, some decisions that this grand jury made that the judge, he wanted the public to know. We find by a unanimous vote that no widespread fraud took place in the Georgia 2020 presidential election. It's not just the biggest headline from today's release of the special purpose grand jury report, but criminal defense attorney Jessica Cito says its position in this report could hint at what we don't see, possible indictments. I think it is telling. It comes right before all of the blacked out parts on um, or, or under seal parts of Who's going to be indicted? Judge Robert McBurney only allowed select portions of the grand jury report to be released, including a section about potential perjury. The grand jury finding that a majority believes perjury may have been committed by one or more witnesses and recommending the DA seek appropriate indictments. We don't know exactly who they are pointing the finger at for perjury, but I think it's um, almost a, a public signal of don't believe everything that they, anybody who was a witness in this may have said to the press. According to the final report, we know 26 Fulton County residents heard evidence from 75 witnesses, and we know the grand jury made recommendations on indictments. But what those recommendations were, that part of the report remains sealed. Anthony Kreis is a constitutional law professor at Georgia State. Ultimately, District Attorney Willis will make the decisions about who to charge or who not to charge, what charges to pursue or not to pursue, and what theories she'll pursue if she is going to prosecute. And so no names in the sections of the report we saw as far as process here. DA Fonnie Willis now has that special purpose grand jury report. She now makes decisions. She could take this to a regular grand jury here at the Fulton County Courthouse to seek indictments. Whether she's going to do that, when she's going to do that, all that being kept secret at the moment. Reporting live at the Fulton County Courthouse, Justin Gray, Channel 2 Action News. Now, the judge only ordered portions of the special grand jury report released today. Channel 2 Action News and other media partners are actually discussing an appeal of the decision because even the portion of the report released today states that the grand jury wanted the full report released today. Much of what that special grand jury investigated happened at the state capitol. And Channel 2's Richard Elliott was there when it happened. He's live now at the capitol with what some lawmakers, Richard, are saying and what they're not saying, actually, after the release of this report. One of the things that Special Purpose Grand Jury investigated happened right there in room 216. There's an event there right now, but back in December of 2020, that's where the false electors met. We reached out to a, a lot of Republicans today. They declined to comment on this report, pointing out there really wasn't a lot of details included in it. A couple of Democratic lawmakers did talk to us, including one who actually testified before the grand jury. The special grand jury report released was short on details. No names, no list of potential crimes except for one, perjury. Jurors insisted several witnesses lied to them under oath and they want them prosecuted. Democratic State Senator Elena Parent was one of the 75 witnesses to testify before the special grand jury. She was inside the December 2020 subcommittee hearing where Rudy Giuliani made a number of false claims of massive voter fraud, claims that the grand jury acknowledges, again, were not true. Parent says it was important for her to be truthful in her testimony. What I tried to do was, um, to the best of my ability, accurately reflect um, what 
happened um, that I was a part of. South Carolina Republican Sorry, Senator Lindsey Graham also testified before the grand jury. When asked, he insisted he testified truthfully too. What's your reaction to the grand jury's recommendation? I have no idea. That perjury charges you need to be pursued. Them. Ask them. But you're confident you're not one of the people that yeah, perjured themselves. I'm, I'm confident I testified openly and honestly. We did reach out to a number of Republican lawmakers. None would talk with us. Democratic State Senator Josh McLaurin says the fact that the grand jurors openly worried that witnesses lied to them under oath shows how seriously they took it. The fact that the grand jury mentioned perjury at all indicates that A, they cared. They cared whether what they were hearing was true. Uh, and B, somebody had something they were trying to hide. No comment today from Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones. Jones was one of the false electors meeting inside room 216 right there. Uh, again, many Republicans declined to comment because they said there just wasn't a lot of details in that report. More than one of them actually told me uh, kind of candidly that this report was, quote, a big nothing burger. We're live at the state capitol. Richard Elliott, Channel 2 Action News.